This is Armin with Open Source RF. And this video is about how we shrunk an Arduino and made it wireless. First, we start with the NRF51822 IC from Nordic Semiconductor. The NRF51822 has a built in 16 MHz 32 bit ARM Cortex M0 processor, 256K flash of which half of it is used for the Bluetooth stack and the other half of it is available for application space. In addition to built-in regulation analog and digital lines, it also has a software controllable peripheral interface that enables it to remap any I.O. pin to any other I.O. pin. In addition, it of course has a 2.4 GHz radio which is compatible with Bluetooth 4.0 low energy. It features a power output from plus 4 dBm down to minus 20 dBm, which is software adjustable, and RSSI, a 10-bit analog to digital converter, SPI, I2C, and UART interfaces, in addition to a 128-bit AES coprocessor. With a built-in DC to DC converter at 3 volts, it's able to achieve 10.5 milliamp at 4 dBm power output. It has ability to wake on button presses or some external stimulus as low as half a microamp. It can run its real-time clock at about 2 microamp and wake up on intervals. It has a built-in temperature sensor and also a true 10-bit ADC. Its input voltage range, which is employed by the RF Duino, is 2.1 volts to 3.6 volts with a nominal at 3 or 3.3. RF Digital has designed a brand new RF module called the RFD51822, which is based on the Nordic NRF51822. This is the module that's used in the RF Duino. Here is an inside picture of the module. The Arduino code runs inside this module. The size of this module is only 15 by 15 millimeter, which again is just about the size of a fingertip. Here's the pinout for the module, the antenna being integrated. All that's required for connection is ground, power, and the seven GPIOs. In addition, there's a reset line. No special RF design is required for use of this part. Its pads are placed at 50 mil spacing, which are easy to solder to. Here you have the RF Duino form factor in a dip configuration with the RFD51822 mounted on top of the board. This is the complete Arduino compatible module. Your Arduino sketches actually run right on this device. No additional components are necessary for you to run your sketches on this device. Here's a top view and also a bottom view with 100,000 spacing pins. And here's a stacked configuration on a solderless breadboard with an RGB button LED board, as well as a CR2032 power supply board. Here's another similar picture of our prototype. The RF Duino is very unique in the way that it could actually run off of a CR2032 3 volt coin cell. It can be put into ultra low power modes and can run for ultra long periods of time on a single coin cell battery. Using this board enables you to run it off of the battery and not have to require any additional wiring. We also have boards like this one which enables it to run off of a dual AAA battery pack. There's an onboard switching regulator enabling it to run down to very low voltages so you can get everything out of the batteries in the maximum battery life possible. These are also all 100,000 centers and can plug into your solderless breadboards. Another similar configuration with a single cell. Note these devices can also run other electronics on your breadboards as well, or again can run fully standalone. Here is a USB adapter which can be used to supply power to the RF Duino and also is required for you to be able to load code onto the RF Duino. This board contains an FTDI chip to interface UART to a USB connector. Again, it is also self-contained and does not require any additional components other than, of course, the RF Duino. Here's a bottom view showing the 100,000 spacing pins. 
Here's a picture of a protoboard which can be plugged on top of any stacked configuration, enabling you to add your own leaded components and have easy access to all of the available pins. Here's the pinout for the RF Duino. As you can see, there are seven GPIO pins, which can be configured for any configuration you wish. They can be digital input-output, they can be analog, I2C, SPI, or PWM. They're software controllable and remappable. Note the availability of the reset pin and how that's used by the FTDI part mounted on the USB board, which is required for resetting the device when you load your sketch. Please take note, additional Arduino boards are not required to use the RF Duino. The RF Duino is truly standalone. Here's the RFD51822 and how it connects on the RF Duino board. It's basically a pin for pin diff converter. The RFD51822 RF module with the RF Duino code loaded onto it can function completely on its own just the same as the diff version of the RF Duino. In this form, it's actually suitable to be put into production applications as well. Or if you're substantially limited on space, this is ideal. Now we're going into the schematic of the USB board, where you'll find there are only three connections, just reset, TX, and RX. The TX and RX allow connection via a UART connection to the RF Duino, where you'll have the bootloader interface. The TX and RX lines combined with Reset enable loading of code via the onboard bootloader on the RF Duino. The RF Duino running on 3 volts requires a voltage step-down regulation from uh, the 5-volt USB connector. And as this LDO along with a yellow power LED uh, provides that regulation. Here you have a uh, well-conditioned interface to USB as well with appropriate uh, ESD protection. And this is the FTDI part. If you can take note to the DTR line, how it's connected to reset as DTR is required via the Arduino IDE to enable a uh, reset to take place of the RF Duino uh, during the programming sequence. We also have green and red TX and RX LEDs so you can monitor the status of uh, the data transfer activities. Once you're done using this board as a bootloader to load your code, you can then use it to also communicate uh, via the USB port with your, with your PC device. Once you're done loading your code, you can also use this device to interface with your PC uh, to transfer data back and forth. So as a review, we use this chip from Nordic which is placed onto this board from RF Digital, which is inside of this module from RF Digital, which that module is then placed onto this DIP converter board to form the full RF Duino. This RF Duino board, all on its own, does require this USB adapter board to be able to load code onto it. If you choose to use the RF Duino without this USB adapter board, then the only way you'll be able to use it is with a preloaded sketch, which we can load prior to shipping. Then in that case, you must receive it with a preloaded sketch. You will have a few different options of sketches that can be loaded onto the device so that you have some ability to be able to prototype with it. It's of course highly recommended for you to pick the option with a USB adapter so that you can pick any sketch, reload and reflash as often as you like in addition to, of course, writing your own sketches. And again, the Arduino code is actually running inside of this device right here. And just a word about the demos that we've shown in our other videos. Uh, they happen to use the iPhone in the demos. That's because the iPhone are, is the first device that we uh, happen to pick up and work with. Um, we have intention of supporting other devices uh, in the future, and uh, the code on the iPhone side as well as other devices are all open source, so they're all free for extensions. So as far as having them work with Android, for example, there's nothing limiting it from working with Android. It just happens to be that we haven't done it yet, um, and anybody in the open source community will be free to do so as well. Here are some slides showing some different examples of applications. 
Here's some slides showing the full range of applications which we've uh, tested with already. Uh, you can find these in the actual motion video that's uh, shown on the Kickstarter page. And a picture again of the RF Duino and uh, the wide range of shield accessory boards that are available at the moment and we're adding uh, more of them very quickly. And of course, you can find this all is uh, open source. We'll be uh, looking forward to the completion of this uh, Kickstarter project uh, to then uh, begin to publish all the open source files.